Hey guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome back to another video lecture. In today's video, we're going to learn about contractionary fiscal policy. Okay, so a little bit of recap. When we begin this topic, okay, so I did mention that there are two types of fiscal policy. One is discretionary fiscal policy, whereby the authorities would deliberately change the tools of fiscal policy, which are government spending and or taxation, in order to address the economic problems. Yeah. So in the last video, we've learned about expansionary fiscal policy, in which the government uses when there's a problem of recession uh, and high unemployment. So today we will look at contractionary fiscal policy, which is normally used to avoid excessive inflation. Okay, so now let's take a look at contractionary fiscal policy. Now, from the word contractionary or contract, what it means is it's trying to make something smaller, right, or reduce in size. So why do you think the government would want to do this? Okay, so the problem would probably be the economy is experiencing excessive inflation or too high of an inflation, okay? A little bit of inflation is good for growth purposes, but if it's too much or too high, the government would want to contain it, okay, or try to reduce it a bit. That is when they adopt contractionary fiscal policy. Okay, so we begin by sketching our problem first. Okay, this is the initial condition, no problem. Okay, so here is P1, okay, sorry about this. And this is 510 billion, so this is our starting point, okay? Again, I took all of these figures from the textbook, okay? And our economy has an NPC of 0 0.75. Uh, why is this given? Naturally, it is for us to calculate our multiplier. And my multiplier is 1 over MPS. MPS is 1 minus NPC. So 1 over 0 0.25, it's 4, okay? Just like before. Okay, so this is our initial condition. Let's draw the problem. Our problem is excessive inflation. Okay, let's write it down somewhere. Problem. Okay, very high inflation. Okay, so that is our problem. So we want to sketch that. Okay, how do you draw inflation? Particularly demand pull inflation, meaning we are pulling the demand curve to the right. Okay, so here would be our demand pull inflation. Okay, hold on, this is 83, 84, okay? Yeah, so what it means by demand pull inflation or a very high inflation is that the aggregate demand curve shifts to the right, okay? So what happens to the price? Is there a new price? Yes. Initially, the price is P1. Now you can see due to the demand pull inflation, price is higher, okay? So here's your new intersection, a new price, P2, okay? Can you see here, this is basically inflation happening here. Okay, so we can see we have um, higher price and higher quantity. So here's five to two. Well, so we need two here. Okay. So you might argue that, hey, that's, a, that's good, isn't it? We have higher real GDP. Okay, the thing is now, the problem is it's ha excessive inflation. What that means is probably 510 is already the economy's full employment level. Okay, if it's not, then it's not a big deal, it's not a problem. But perhaps that this is already the economy being at full employment level, therefore anything more would just exhaust the economy's resources. Okay, so the government want to calm the economy down a bit. So what does the government want to do here? Okay, so as you can see, how much is the difference here? 522 billion minus 510, so there's actually a change of 12 billion, right? So this is the amount of positive GD cap that we would like to reduce. Okay, right. So we would want to reduce or shift the aggregate demand curve back to the left. So we know that G, okay, let's look at the first tool, okay? G or government spending is a direct component of aggregate demand. So what we want to do is we want to reduce the G because we have reduced uh, G, therefore AD, which is C plus IG plus G. Plus X and plus Z. So if you reduce the G, the aggregate demand curve will <coughs> shift to the left. Okay. So now the question is, how much? How much would the decrease in government spending be? Should it be 12? Remember guys, we have a multiplier here. So we cannot reduce G by 12 because then it will be more than 12. You know what I mean? 12 times 4 will be much more. So we need to reduce the aggregate demand by slightly first. Remember there are two changes, right? When aggregate demand curve shifts. One is the initial change here's my pen okay one is the initial the first change one is the initial change in this case is the first change in 
government spending and then finally it will be the full change yeah all right okay now what is the first fall in spending what should it be okay we can utilize this the change you want okay we can use the other alternative formula multiplier remember okay another formula multiplier is change in gdp over change in initial spending right so we know the multiplier is four change in gdp here is 12 so this is x but we don't know so what is x here is basically just three billion okay so we would want to reduce g by three billion okay so this is the first movement okay initial change is a fall reduce reduction of government spending by three billion okay three times four we'll go back to 12. okay now the thing is right, here's where it gets a little bit tricky will the 84 actually go back to 83 now let's look here okay All right so this is 84 now 510 basically what it means is we are here now right 522 we want to go back to 510 okay right this is the new price guys and do you remember the ratchet effect ratchet effect meaning prices won't go back down okay so meaning the price is kind of like new here it's kind of stuck here so when you want to sketch the ad the new ad curve aggregate demand curve you cannot go back to 83 the reason being because if you actually go back to 83 right because this is the new price so this will be our new intersection point okay if we actually go back to aggregate demand 3 or 83 our um real gdp will be much much less okay it will be 502 billion here we don't want to go back that much we just want to go back up to the original gdp that we've uh, we've achieved before so what it means is we cannot go back to 83 what we need to do is because we want to go back here right so here okay we need to extend this line cross or touch the new price so this is basically where our new oops aggregate demand curve should be 85 okay let me just erase this a bit because now it looks a bit chaotic okay all right okay oh, sorry yeah so here would be the full effect or the full fall of the aggregate demand curve 85 okay so now so let me repeat the first change would be a fall in government spending by 3 billion here the first one this dotted or dashed line and then due to the multiplier effect the full effect of the fall in ad curve will be moving from 84 to 85 here which means we will go back to the original gdp where we started off okay so that's basically how we solve this problem using um, a fall in government spending Okay, so now let's move on to the next tool of fiscal policy, taxation. Okay, so what can we do now since we want to reduce the aggregate demand curve to the left, therefore our taxation has to be increased. Okay, so it's basically the opposite. Okay, remember T is an indirect component of the aggregate demand curve because you won't see any T here. Okay. So what is a component of aggregate spending? G, I, G, C, and X, N. So which part of T will affect or influence that component of aggregate demand? It's consumption. Okay, Remember yesterday, um, the, in the last video, I mentioned to you that when there's a change in T, remember? So in this case, when there's an increase in T by a certain amount, what happens is there will be a fall in disposable income by that certain amount. Okay, equal amount. So when there's a fall or the, when there's a change in disposable income, okay, what happens is consumption will fall and savings will also fall. Let's focus here. This consumption is a component of aggregate demand. So this is what we're going to look at. Okay, remember our MPC is 0 0.75. So how much would the change in consumption be? So in our case, we already know how much should the initial change be, guys. Remember? So from just now, we know that the spending must reduce by 3 billion. So we know that this or fall in consumption should be 3 billion. So we know. 
So the question is, how much should the increase in taxation be? So we just need to work backwards. How to get this from here? So all we need to do is take this amount, okay, and divide it with the MPC. Okay, why? Because how did we get 3 billion? It's 0 0.75 times the X, the, the increase in T. Then we got the 3 billion, right? So we want to know what the X is. So we just work backwards, 3 billion over 0 0.75. So we will get 4 billion. Okay, so that's the answer. So we go back here, we increase taxation by 4 billion. We can still use the same diagram. Okay, our narrative is slightly different. Okay, in the sense that if we want to talk about the second tool, we say that by increasing taxation by four billion dollars, okay, what happens is, okay, there will be um, a fall in consumption by three billion dollars here. So you explain this first, and then due to the multiply effect, the demand curve will shift to the left. Okay, from eighty four to eighty five, and the old equilibrium will be reached back again. Okay, you may remember that I did mention to you um, in terms of the tools of fiscal policy, we can either, okay, for contractionary fiscal policy, yeah, contractionary fiscal policy, we can either reduce government spending, increase uh, taxation, or the third one, okay, it's a combination. Yeah, combination of what? Combination of these two tools. Let me just scoot over here and right here. Okay, so we can reduce G and increase T at the same time, but the total effect, okay, would have to be same, which is three billion, right? Okay, so the total spending, um, yeah, the total spending, or in this case, the total fall in spending, would have to be three billion. Okay, so we, you can play around whichever you want. Okay, let's say you want to reduce G by two billion. Right, so you know that here would be a fall in C by 1 billion, right? Because 2 plus 1 is 3. So you know that you want to reduce C or consumption by 1 billion. So how much would the increase in T be? So what you need to do is just take 1 billion, you divide it by 0 0.75, which is the MPC. So you'll be able to get this amount, which is 1.33 billion. Okay.